yes, yes, he did. Yes, yes, yes. And you may not be able to get to the church house, uh -huh. but if God is in your house, then you're in the house of the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here we go. I was glad. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go, let us go into the house of the Lord. Sing it, Amani. I was glad when they said unto me, I was me. ecstatic, overjoyed. Yes, I, I was glad when they said unto me, he woke me up this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, and since I'm breathing, let us go into the house. I'm gonna praise the Lord. Lord. Yes, your way. Let's have church. Church. Let's have church. Let's have church. Let's have church. You said. Let's have church. Show now. Let's have church. Let's have church. He's a little too good. Let's have church. He's been too kind. Let's have church. He's been a wonderful. Let's have church. All the time. He puts food on my table. I know he's able. Let's have church. He's got clothes on my back. Let's have church. And I won't go back. Let's have church. God is good. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Welcome to another worship celebration here at St. Paul AME Church in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the southern part of heaven. I'm Dr. Michael A. Cousin, the pastor of this very fine church, and I'm glad you're able to join us again on this Sunday, the first Sunday of 2021. God has blessed us to live to see another year. And now I ask as we prepare ourselves, as we always do, let us open up with a word of prayer as we usher in the presence of the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for blessing us with another opportunity to serve and to lift up your name. We welcome you right now as you come into our hearts, into our homes, into our church, and to abide within us and among us. We ask right now that your presence will bless our prayers. Lord, bless our presence. Lord, we ask you would just bless the one who is to bring the word that your word may go forth and to fall on to someone's heart right now, to take hold and to take root, Lord, and to be a place in them. And Lord, when you bless us with your presence, we'll be quick and always careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. For it's in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And now, let us be blessed with our worship celebration. Trust me. 
but trust in him. everyone. Happy New Year's. I'm Shantae and I'm here to provide you with your lectionary text for January the 3rd, 2021. Our text today comes from the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, and today we'll be looking at verses 7 through 14. Today I'll be using the Common English Bible for our translation, and it reads, The Lord proclaims, sing joyfully to the people of Jacob. Shout for the leading nation. Raise your voices with praise and call out. The Lord has saved his people, the remaining few in Israel. I'm going to bring them back from the north. I will gather them from the end of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the disabled, expectant mothers and those in labor. A great throng will return here. With tears of joy, they will come while they pray, I will bring them back. I will lead them by quiet streams and on smooth paths so they don't stumble. I will be Israel's father. Ephraim will be my oldest child. Listen to the Lord's words, you nations, and announce it to the distant islands. The one who scattered Israel will gather them and keep them safe as a shepherd his flock. The Lord will rescue the people of Jacob and deliver them from the power of those stronger than they are. 
They will come shouting for joy on the hills of Zion, jubilant over the Lord's gifts, grain, wine, oil, flocks and herds. Their lives will be like a lush garden. They will grieve no more. Then the young woman, women will dance for joy. The young and old men will join in. I will turn their mourning into laughter and their sadness into joy. I will comfort them. I will lavish the priests with abundance and shower my people with my gifts, declares the Lord. I have read for your hearing today the book of Jeremiah verses 7 through 14 from the 31st chapter. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. From all that dwells below the skies, let the Creator's praises arise. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land, by every tongue. The summary of the Decalogue. Hear what Christ our Savior saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen, amen, amen. It's giving time, and we thank you for supporting the church at such a time as this. There are different ways in which you can send to give to the church for the support of the ministry. First, you can give through Givelify.com, our online giving app. Just go to Givelify, type in the name of the church, St. Paul Amy Church. There you will see a picture of the church and the picture of the pastor. Select the amount in which you wish to give, click, and that's it. Or you can send your gift through the U.S. mail at St. Paul Amy Church. 101 North Merritt Mill Road, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, 27516. Or if you're in the neighborhood, just feel free to drop by and drop off your gift. We'd love to sit in fellowship with you and just talk about the goodness of the Lord. And remember, my brothers and sisters, we thank you for your support. And as always, I'll pray for you. You pray for me and watch God change things. Hey! 
Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. If you have your Bibles, you would turn to the New Testament book of Romans, the 12th chapter. And beginning at verse 1, and we're reading verses 1 and 2 from the New Revised Standard Version, we find these words recorded. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The second verse, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For just a moment, I want to preach on these words. It's time for a reset. It's time for a reset. Staples, the office supply company, ran a successful ad campaign. I'm sure many of us remember highlighting how you may eliminate your problems that you've encountered in terms of your office needs or your business needs by simply touching a reset button. <laughs> in this age of electronics, we see here and everything that we know that we have encountered so many problems in dealing with this new age of electronics that we find ourselves being in Cumbered with malware and bad applications or just junk mail which slows us down. Things we pick up along the way being on the internet or just in our everyday use of electronics. That it is recommended that sometimes we got to do a reset. When we hit that button and take that device back to when it was working well to try to rectify the problem. Whenever you find yourself, your device slowing down or, or not working like it used to, it is suggested that you do a reset in order to remove those unnecessary programs or just junk that slows you down. Doesn't that seem like for some of us for this past year of 2020, we need a reset? that we have encountered so many things that have slowed us down from, need to be from the global pandemic to the slow response of watching the administration do nothing to the social unrest that's out in the streets or, or finding ourselves now with this social distancing that we've become cold and callous. And we're wondering, you know, when will it end? We have witnessed so much. And even within our own society, we need a reset when we are the richest nation in the world, so they say. But still we have so many social ills. And one of them in terms of we're finding out now, families going hungry for lack of food. It seems that well, it was a collective sigh when we expressed and watched the calendar move from 2020 to 2021. That we felt that this was time for us to experience a reset. In the passage which was read, Apostle Paul speaks to the church in this letter, which is really his longest letter. And he speaks, and you want to understand Paul, read Romans, read that 12th chapter. He pretty much gives the foundation of his Christology, and, and he talks about transformation. He tells us that when you are a follower of Christ, your conversion transforms you into a better person and to a better state of mind. The mind is, is central in terms of being able to understand, have a better understanding of the glories of God. Paul often talked about his Damascus Road conversion, and he used that as his spiritual reset. 
that he was able to remove some of those things that slowed him down spiritually and mentally. He was able to get a clear understanding of what God was doing in his life. His life was so changed that people had doubts and wondered, how did this occur? And Paul tells him his own Damascus road that I had a reset. Yeah, I think for some of us right now for the church, it's time for us to experience a reset. It's time for us to experience a reset, first of all, mentally. We need to reset our thinking. You know, we, we need to quit this backward thinking, get rid of all this backward thinking, doubts that, 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 that come and, and make us unsure of our own abilities. Are we doing ministry the way that, that, that God would have us to do. Yes, we are performing miraculous things. Let's remove all the doubt in spite of the obstacles. We're, the church is still rolling on. We need to reset our thinking, to get rid of all the negatives. You know, instead of focusing on the negatives that we have encountered, look at what God has done for us. God has brought us through another year. Oh, we ought to be shouting right now that we need to reset our thinking. We need to think about the positives and the possibilities. Instead of talking about all the negative things, focus on what God has done for us, the positive things. The church has left the building, yes, but as the church has left the building, the church is still carrying out ministry. We look around, attendance has increased. In spite of being out of the building, our attendance is still there. Attendance is rising. But in spite of being out of the building, we've still been able to reclaim some folk who've fallen by the wayside. Oh, praise be to Almighty God. So we need to change our thinking instead of talking about what's wrong. Let us look at what is going on that's right. Yeah, change your thinking. Reset, change your thinking. And secondly, a reset, not just mentally, we need to have a reset socially. We need to renew our fellowship one to the other. You know, I, I, I miss seeing folk in church. I really do. But now that it has given me a greater appreciation for when I see the members and the friends that, that don't take for granted the fellowship that God has blessed us to receive. I, 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 I'm so excited that this is the year in which we shall gather once again and be able to fellowship one to the other in person. Yeah, we need to reset uh, uh, socially, uh, our relationships. We need to have a reset socially. Thank you, 2020, for teaching us how blessed we are when we ever meet together in person. Thank you. Thank you, 2020, for teaching us the joy of in person worship. I was speaking with a former member, and she said, You know, I really do miss going to church. And I asked her, You know, I really didn't see you in church that much. How could you miss it? And she replied, well, I always had the option of whether I could go or I had the option of staying home. I thought, oh, no. Praise be to Almighty God. Sometimes it's got to be taken away from you in order to appreciate it. I thank God for the in-person fellowship of being able to gather once again. Oh, we need a reset socially that when we come back together, when we return, we'll be able to have joy and true koinonia. We'll be able to enjoy the company one to the other. We have that reset mentally, have that, me, that reset socially, but we also need to have a reset spiritually. Reset in terms of making sure that we know where God is in our living. Give God the glory each and every day for being with us. That's, that's the first reset there spiritually. You know, give God praise for bringing us through another day. Yeah, give God, give God the praise and give God glory for all that God has done for us. 
when we come and when we give our praise, give sincere praise and thanking you, Lord, that we're able to come back together, renew our relationship with God. This is what we're doing right now. No longer take for granted the blessings of God's grace, love and mercy. No longer dismiss the power of God's redemptive love. When we are able to reset ourselves spiritually, God truly is first in our lives. I don't know about you, but I need the Lord each and every day. And I'm thankful for this spiritual awareness of being able to get my mind right. I'm able to get my mind right. I'm able to get right with my neighbor and I'm able to get right with my God. That's, it's time for a reset. What about you right now, my brothers and sisters? What about you this day? Are you ready for a reset? Ah, oh, we got the first communion. We're getting ready to share right now. 2021, I don't have a button for you to hit, but I do have a place at the altar where you can come and give thanks and praise to Almighty God as you reset and renew your commitment with Almighty God. Like Apostle Paul, we've, we've learned it is not enough to know about God, but you've got to know what God is doing in your life. Let me tell you what happens when you have a reset. I, I, I don't have many things that I enjoy in my life, but there's one thing that I enjoy is listening to music. And there is a speaker, one of these wireless speakers, a Bluetooth speaker that I have. And I like to listen to music at night before I go to sleep or listen to music in the morning as I'm going about my day in, in my home. And, and, and this there's one occasion where my speaker did not work. It wasn't talking. It wasn't connected to my phone. And, and, and I wonder what's going on. And, and it wouldn't work. And, 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 and I, I was thinking, Lord have mercy. I just bought this thing a year ago. It should be working right now. And I thought about it and I said, well, what, 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 what can I do? What can I do to fix this thing? And, and, and I was able to go online. And I read about that particular brand. It said every now and then it needs to be reset. And I was getting ready to buy a new speaker. I was getting ready to toss it out. But it said all you got to do is press the button for five seconds. And it resets itself. And you're able to program it back to its original state. Huh. Does that sound like some of us? We went through a year that we were getting ready to toss it in. We were getting ready to throw everything out. We thought everything was wrong, but all we had to do was just pause for just a moment, gather our thoughts, and be able to center ourselves. And I praise God for this, that God has blessed us. You don't have to throw it out. You just reset yourself right now and be able to renew yourself. This is what we're about to do in just a moment as we give God the glory and the praise. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through another year. As we prepare ourselves to go through 2021, I remind that him we are often tossed and driven on this restless sea of time. By and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God have gathered at home we'll tell the story of how we've overcome for we shall understand it better by and by what about you right now are you ready for a reset it comes when you've got to open up your heart and let God in it comes when you realize you need to change some things in your life mentally socially Spiritually, as we learn right now, in terms of transforming our thinking, renewing of our minds so that we may understand God's will. God has something for you right now. But how will you receive it if you're not in fellowship? Now, that's the beautiful thing about being a part of Christian fellowship that you got folk you can ask about stuff and they can help you and be able to let you know you're not by yourself. If there's one right now, then the sound of my voice who does not have a church home, all you got to do is just, amen, type in that chat box 
let us know and we'll reach out to you. For if you don't have a church home, St. Paul would be blessed to be your church. <laughs> and I'll be mighty thankful to be your pastor. At such a time as this, I'm so glad in 2021 that it's time for a reset. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you now. We ask right now you will bless us and keep us as we prepare to share and to celebrate the communion. Lord, give us a sense of thanksgiving and give us a sense of gratitude of looking at all the blessings you've given to us through the past year and the hope in which we look forward to this new year in which we are entering to. Bless us with your presence, with your love, and walk with us as we walk through this year. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time for a reset. This is my